Um, the first one, Charmaine, is about um, eligibility criteria for people who are here on a family reunion visa. Do you have any advice there? Sorry, you're muted at the moment. Sorry, I was just drinking some water. Um, certainly, um, students who are on a family reunion visa, they don't meet the criteria for higher education. They would need to apply for one of those criteria that I mentioned um, at the end, like a refugee status or one of those to be able to apply for student finance. But they could apply um, through the Home Office to get a status and then we would then look at providing them with full funding based on the status that they receive. Right, and, and once they've been in the UK, once they meet the long residency criteria, they some of them could be, there. it depends on the status. If they, they get that family reunion and they go through maybe um, asylum and they get refugee status, then they automatically become eligible for funding immediately. Whereas if they go through the long residency, then they need to meet the three years criteria or indefinite leave to remain, they need to meet the three years ordinary residency in the United Kingdom. So it depends on which criteria they, they get. I see, thank you. Um, a question here is for somebody who has uh, taken a break from their studies what should uh, they do if they have received a loan from the student loans company already, a maintenance loan? Okay, um, well, it really depends on the reasons behind that. If they've disrupted their studies for, say, health reasons, there's a, a they, or even let's say they got pregnant, they weren't, oh, they, 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 they had too much going on in their lives and it's in, impacted on their mental health um, or they've had an accident or something like that, then basically um, I would suggest that they let the university know that that's the reason that they've left because that then that they put a note on our system to say that they have left for health reasons or whatever. And when they decide that they want to go back to um, start university again, um, then they can put in something called compelling personal reasons via the student financial advisor at that university to say the reason that they had to leave halfway through the first year was due to health or whatever then we would then give them back that year so they can restart a whole new application and get the full funding but if they have just left for no reason at all then they would have lost that year um, and basically if they've had say they've done between now say they started in September and they managed to get to December and they decide, OK, it's not for me, but they've gone after a certain date, then we would pay their tuition fee and they would have lost that for the year. That maintenance will have been given to them. We won't claim that back. But if we then give them money in term two, we would need to have that money back from them. So that's another way that they would go in. They would go into debt with us if they receive that money and keep it because they're not there for the second term. I so see. really, there there isn't anything. It, it depends on their circumstances what they should do. Okay, thank you. Just a, a brief follow up from the chat. Um, does giving birth count as health reasons? It is because if you've had to leave during that period and you can't come back, that would be one of the reasons. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, and just for the other questions in the chat, if, if you could, um, Annie, if you don't mind popping the Slido link in the chat again, or if you're having trouble using Slido, if you send the questions to Annie, um, we'll, we'll include those. Okay. Um, next question is a person who's planning to study on a student visa and holds an unconditional offer from a UK university eligible to apply for a student loan from overseas. No, they're not. Okay, so they need to be... Um, resident in the UK but also is it the issue with um, being on a student they're holding visa? holding a student visa that they've got a student visa for a reason they're coming from a different country so they would need to apply to that country that they're at um, say they're coming over from Germany or something they've come here as on a student visa then they'd need to apply for ge to Germany for that particular visa they'd need to hold a residency status one of those ones that I went through on that slide they would need to hold one of those it doesn't stop them applying for one of those whilst they're in the UK but based on the, the fact they've got a student visa doesn't allow them to access funding for higher education from us okay thank you and then um 
same answer here. I think if, if somebody is in the UK and doing a degree on a student visa, they wouldn't be eligible until they meet one of the categories that you outlined. Yeah. Correct. Okay, next question. I'm a master's student, but had to claim asylum. Um, advice for continuing um, education as an asylum seeking applicant? Until you've got the residency, one of those residencies. So asylum a seeker isn't a residency that we look at. You go through this process of being an asylum seeker and then you're given one of those residencies and it based on one of those residencies that would mean so if you were given it let's say as a refugee status or a Ukrainian status then from that minute that you get that then you'd be entitled to apply for student funding but if it's not and you get indefinite leave to remain under another one then you would need to meet the three years ordinary residency to be able to apply. Thank you. Yeah. And as you shared, um, in the meantime, while seeking asylum, they may be able to get a scholarship um, that you can yes, see information absolutely. about on the STAR website. Um, interest, I think you covered this in, in your presentation, but um, paying interest is that for both the tuition fee loan and the maintenance loan? Absolutely. Tuition fee is a loan and a maintenance is a loan. But when I talked about disabilities, disabled students allowance, parents learning allowance, adult dependent grants or childcare grants, those are all grants. So you don't have to pay those back. But tuition fee loan and maintenance, you do have to pay back. And you only start paying them back once you start to actually earn any money. Interest is added at day one. Um, all the way through but it's not the it, you're not paying back the the it's the loan's not the thing that you're looking at it's what you're earning that determines what you pay back if you're not earning anything we don't take anything back thank you that's a really helpful distinction loan is something you pay back with interest a grant you don't need to pay back no and postgraduate finance, I think you, you spoke about this um, as a contribution rather than full costs. Um, we, we'd also had a, a question about PhD, um, finance for PhD level. Do you have any mm -hmm. advice on that? It's the same. Postgraduate finance, it, it comes under masters. It all comes under the same banner, if you like. But um, what they'd need to do is they can actually get quite a few, some of them can get, if they get it paid, then we wouldn't be giving them any funding. But if it's unpaid, then we would look at giving them funding. And the course has got to be obviously registered with us to be able to get funding. I see. Yeah. And, and as you said, might not be enough to cover all of their costs. It isn't mm. generally. <laughs> okay. That's helpful to know. Um, if, if somebody has an education in the UK and then moves overseas to work, will they have to return the student loan in the UK and what would be the rules for that? Okay, if you leave the United Kingdom, and, and, and that's why I said about reading the terms and conditions, it does say that if you decide to go and live and work somewhere else, that you do need to let us know where you are. And once you do that, then if you tell us what you're earning, that will determine whether you actually make any repayments. It's not based on um, like the threshold in the United Kingdom, like I said, £25,000 a year for the United Kingdom at the moment for next year, next year's applicants. But if you then move to, let's say, China, China China's um, level of, um, let's say, they don't earn as much as we do. So the threshold there might be like £10,000 a year you've got to be earning before you pay it. Maybe like in Australia, that that theirs is a very stable country and you might need to be earning £30,000 a year, um, $30,000 a year before you start to pay any money back. So there's different thresholds for different countries and you can look that up on the repayment website. Great, thank you. Um, a question here about the impact of student loans on entitlements to benefits. Okay, if you're on benefits, then if you're going on to higher education under the benefits section, it does say that you have to take out a student loan um, if it's if you're entitled to it. So if you're entitled to it, you must take it. And if you don't take it, then you still don't get the benefits because lots of people say, well, I like to stay on benefits, but I don't want to take the loan you can't do that so you'd have to take the loan but it will impact on your benefits and the people that are doing your benefits will then look at your loan level that you're getting through and they will do a calculation to work out what your benefits are going to be. Okay thank you so definitely one to uh, to look into in detail before mm. um, before applying. 
Um, yeah, we had quite a few questions about kind of individual circumstances. Um, what would you advise if, if applicants are unsure whether or not they're eligible for a student loan? Where can they get advice? OK, well, all the links that I gave them will give them an idea. Um, but also the main source, I think, will be the student financial advisors at the university, not recruitment teams and things like that. There is a team of people that support you with um, funding, bursaries, telling you how to be able to manage your finances. And they normally sit within student services. I would suggest that you made an appointment to speak to one of them. They're normally available to you on open days and such. And they're the ones that we work with very closely to, um, they build, you know, it, for instance, I've had somebody now for um, a student and they've literally been trying to work with a student loans company and can't resolve something. So we're looking at it together. So they work as, um, for the student to be able to sort it out for them. So those would be, I would say, the best people to be able to go for. Great, thank you. Um, if a student is under 18, are they eligible for a student loan? Um, yes, they are. Let's say you're 14 and you get into Oxbridge for some reason, that you're brilliant at one particular area and you go to university, then yes, you're entitled. It is different and it does work differently, but it, you are entitled to be able to apply for it. 